Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Tom Yum Gung 2, also known as The Protector 2, a Thai action flick from 2013 that was directed by Prakya Pinkyu and stars Tony Ja. When boss Suchart is murdered, all evidence points to Kam, played by Tony Ja. Forced to run as he fights to clear his name, he is hunted by not only the police, but boss Suchart's revengeful twin nieces, one of whom is played by Ji Jayanan. The main villain, however, is a man by the name of L.C., played by the RZA, a crime lord with his own agenda. All of this conflict, unfortunately, puts an elephant's life at risk when it's taken against its will, and it's up to Kam to save it. Story acting and script writing. <laughs> you already know what's common. Story acting and script writing in Tom Young Gung 2... They're rather weak, and if you've seen the first film in this franchise, that will not be a surprise to you. Uh, the movie begins with our protagonist actually holding a man hostage, which is kind of shocking. Uh, first time I saw this, he's got a knife to the guy's neck. The resolution of that scene is kind of confusing, actually, until it's explained later on. And then we're thrown into flashback mode, uh, follow the events that led us to this dangerous situation. In a nutshell, the film is basically bunch of fight scenes and action scenes that are strung together by a flimsy plot. However, some of the dialogue in this film is especially funny. If you watch the trailers of Tom Young Gung 2, uh, even when it first came out, one of the trailers has an absolutely hilarious line from RZA. I laugh hysterically every time I hear that line, and in the movie it's even better because he has another line that he adds to the end of it that's even more dumb <laughs> than the line in the trailer. It does make sense given the context of the story, but his delivery and just the ridiculousness of the actual wording, it, uh, it's, it's entertaining stuff if you're, into, if you're into that type of thing. Tony Jaa's acting, though, at this point in time, I think began to improve a little bit. Um, you could see a little bit of improvement and growth in his charisma, even in this film. Uh, he's still somewhat stiff in this one, but there is some progress here, and I think his acting actually got way better during the last decade or so. You know, if you watch stuff like, even like SPL2, Triple Threat, or Return of Xander Cage, you see a more, more like comfortable and charismatic acting style. I think his, you know, he's softened a little bit, as I like to say, um, for his career. You know, because early on, you know, intimidating in his fighting style, but a little bit stiff in his delivery, but they, he improved that throughout his career, so that's good. But what about the action? Well, there's a lot of it, which makes this a fast-paced affair, so that's good. Thank goodness for that, given the other weaknesses that we've pointed out already. And in my opinion, the execution is generally fun to watch. I think it is. Now, there's some use of CGI here, and some scenes are a bit too short, some of the fights. The editing is a little bit tighter compared to its predecessor, and some of the close-up reactions of the characters while they're fighting, kind of awkward in how they're shot. Like, they're from, like, low angles. They're close-ups, possible green screens behind them, etc. I know this film was released, I think, in 3D, so that might have something to do with it, but there are some awkward shots in this for sure. There is a cheesy feel to some of the stuff in this movie. Like the, there's like a scene where like a half naked girl gets into a fight. Like it's like a, uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. Almost like a dojo fight or just a, you know, a fight within a uh, fight club. She beats a dude up and Riz is just sitting there like looking on in approval. And you know, it's, it's just kind of cheesy, man. Uh, now in terms of specific fights, the first big set piece, I think, is the motorbike rooftop fight and the subsequent chase. And that scene is the scene that is going to make or break this movie for you, if you've never seen it before, because it has quite a bit of CGI in it. CGI projectiles, CGI vehicles, some green screen work, etc. Some of the individual shots look pretty bad at times, and in some sense it's it's almost like a betrayal of how Ja has built his career up to this point. Uh, looking at this movie again, I don't understand why they felt the need to throw all of these like really short one to two second CGI shots into the film. They could have made the scene work without them. 
like what you can't throw something at at a, at, a, at the camera. You know what I mean? Or near the camera, like throw an actual projectile. Or you know how they do it in the old school movies. You know, you you do a, an edit. You know, the guy like throws a knife and then the camera, you know, goes fast. It rotates and then it edits in between. And then you you shoot the knife when it's already like in the wood or something next to a dude's head. I mean, just do that again. It would have been better than this, right? So I do think some viewers are going to have a problem with this scene just because of its presentation. But at the same time... If you just look at it from like a generic action standpoint and disassociate it from like the the absolute highs of Jaws' best films, the scene is lengthy and entertaining to watch. And the action design is pretty good, has some variety. You get some stunt work that's pretty good here as well. I mean, they strapped the dude onto a drifting car and that car was drifting pretty fast. So, you know, props to that dude. And he was strapped onto it and it looked it looked pretty dangerous. So, you know, when I watch this first big action set piece, I do cringe a little bit at some of the presentation, but I still kind of like it, you know? Uh, fortunately for other viewers, the first fight involving Ja and... I'm not sure how to pronounce this man's name. Is it... Marese Crump? I'm not sure. I'm not even going to try it again. But Ja's first fight with Crump is legit and hard-hitting. It's a good fight. I like the intimidation factor that Crump brings to the film. You know, the dude has a good physical presence. He can move well. And his villain character is actually pretty tough to take down. He gets to fight Ja a handful of times in the movie. I like that element. I do like how they used him in this. I think he uh, provides some entertainment value. The finale is good. Again, they use CGI fire at times. It's just one example of the CGI. You used real fire in the first Tom Young Gung movie. But somehow you couldn't in the sequel. You know, you couldn't make it work. It's just weird. Like, I don't understand this type of decision making. But uh, the final death scene in the movie, you'll laugh out loud when you see it. It's it's pretty ridiculous. So, there's de like I said, there's a stronger stench of cheesiness in this film compared to its predecessor. And then there are a bunch of other little fights peppered in. Uh, G. Jayanan, as I mentioned before does fight quite a bit, but the filmmakers kind of failed to give her enough in terms of memorable moments. She does have some good moves as she breaks out here and there, but they really should have designed some specific moments just to showcase her, and they didn't really do that, or at least not as much as I would have liked. And that's kind of the story of this woman's career, uh, to be honest, right? But when I look at the action overall, lots of flaws. I mean, you could really dissect this and tear it apart. But, for some reason, I think it's still fun to watch. You know, if I had to choose between this movie or re-watching Ung Bak 3, I'm choosing this movie. You know, I am. Uh, every time. Alright? And I didn't hate Ung, Ung Bak 3 as much as most people, but, I don't know, there's something about this. It's, it's, despite its problems, it's just watchable action trash. I could sit through this so easily. You know, I just watched it, like I said again, like a few nights ago. You know, you just crack open a beer... I can sit through this flick. <laughs> you know, it was pretty entertained by it for some reason. But you know how I am with my uh, action trash. I'm pretty forgiving. If you keep the pacing up, you know, you keep the action at a pretty good level, I'm going to be pretty satisfied. So if you do decide to watch it, set your expectations low. You know, I know a number of people out there like hate this movie because of the CGI and the way things are presented. But uh, I did like it. Uh, it's currently available streaming on Amazon and on physical media, also on Amazon. And as always, we'll see you next time.